So I didn't know where to start this water video. And then it hit me that besides the great view from my toilet, the sky was the logical place because up there in the clouds, all your brewing water is perfectly distilled. It's pure H2O. And now you might be looking at me saying, Pat, I just want you to tell me how to treat my water. I don't want to see an incredibly entertaining video with you being your awesome self. Just stick with me. It's important. The thing to know is that all the brewing water starts up there perfectly distilled. The rain falls down from the clouds and its trip down is actually pretty tumultuous. It gets pretty badly beaten along the way, not just in waterfalls, but as it falls down through the atmosphere, it's being beaten by the air and it actually soaks up a lot of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and becomes essentially lightly carbonated. A chemist will tell you that carbonated water can also be called carbonic acid. And it is acidic. And when it hits the ground, it's looking for whatever it can find to neutralize itself. So after the water falls and picks up the CO2, there's two major things that can happen. One is it can stay close to the surface and it can end up someplace like this, the alcove reservoir. Part of the reason why people say we have such good water in Albany is because we have an abundance of reservoirs like this one that are shallow and wide. They allow the CO2 in the water to bubble to the top like a glass of tonic water. People started settling this area because of the abundance of water. They would dam up areas like this to do things like make water wheels for steel plants. Now we have an abundance of reservoirs where all of our rainwater can sit and let all the acidity just kind of act on the sticks and twigs and dirt and geese and whatever else is in there and slowly brings the water down to a neutral alkalinity which makes it easy to treat and bring to the people of Albany. Unfortunately, not all the water can find its way to something nice like a reservoir. The majority just hits the ground, still acidic, seeps through the soil and ends up against the bedrock where the carbonic acid attempts to neutralize itself with whatever alkaline minerals it can find, things like calcium carbonate, chalk, lime, things like that will slowly help the water turn neutral again, but will have an effect on your brewing water that can't be reversed very easily and will determine what styles you can make with it. But if you are lucky enough to get reservoir water, it'll travel to you through a river like the one under my feet right now. You see, Albany's got a couple of rivers that over the centuries have been completely covered by sprawl and you never even know they were here. Most of it's a lot older than that too. Try not to get hit by a train here. Ooh, those are good. Wow. 
别扎。You can see what it would look like without all the algae growing in it. But recently, part of that river got uncovered. And here it is. I came through here a few years ago and this whole area looked just like that bit of train track I showed you earlier when I said the river was underfoot. And now, it's this beautiful park. But this really is a functioning river and it did deliver water to the people of Albany. Okay, now this is the important part. Why have I been showing you how Albany used to do things in Old River? Why am I showing you the pump station that's currently a brewery that used to be the place where we treated water? Because all that water we treated still travels through lead pipes. Lead pipes, like this one here, in my basement. Now the thing about lead pipes is that they do work exceptionally well as a pipe. They don't wear out, they're easy to bend into place, you know, they don't rot. The only problem with lead pipes is that they tend to poison people and make them go insane, a la Roman Empire. So. What do you do in the lead pipe situation? Well, pretty much, you have to make sure that there's nothing at all in your water that can bind with any of that lead. So what you're left with, basically, is a very old city with some very old pipes and some very clean water. So anyway, out here in NASA, where I swear I saw a guy eat a snapping turtle the other day, I have the exact opposite kind of water. I have a well. It pumps water from about 150 feet below ground. That water hasn't seen the light of day in, I don't know, hundreds of years, maybe since before man walked the earth. I don't know. But as it's pumped out of the ground, it has to go through a dirt filter, uh, a course, fine, extra fine filter, and then if I want to drink it and have it not taste like ocean water, I have to run it through an RO filter after that. And the basic thing to take away is the minerals are very, very hard and very, very expensive to get out of the water. And besides tasting not great, they make the water alkaline. And more on this later, but life doesn't thrive in alkaline, and brewing beer is life. So we have to make a more lifelike environment. We'll get into more of that on the next video. I wanted to make this just one video, but as you can probably tell, it's taken me quite a long time to get this one done so I think we'll just call it and uh, I'll shoot another one or I don't know two where I actually treat the water and uh, explain how that's done and uh, I guess even why it's done but for now that's why the water is the way it is 
and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get around to changing it uh, a little bit faster than it took me to make this video. Thanks for checking me out. Sláinte.